my wife cheated on me with several men while we were dating in college, and that's how I found out several could mean more than 10. My wife, 44F, and I, 43M, have been married for 20 years. We started dating in high school when I was a junior and she was a senior, and we were long distance for her first two years of college while I was in high school and did one year at community college. Then we went to college in the same city for a year and have lived together since. We got married the summer after I graduated from college. Our marriage has been pretty great so far, but I initiated a divorce after I discovered that she was sleeping with multiple other men during the two years we were long distance. Just after Christmas, we got together with a few friends of hers from college to catch up, have dinner, and hang out. We talked about a lot of stuff, and my wife mentioned that we met in high school, not that we dated, just that we met. Her old college roommate commented that it was crazy that we met in high school, had a few wild years in college, and then ended up together. I played along and commented that I didn't know if my wife was as crazy as I was. The roommate started to tell a story, but my wife cut her off and said she was uncomfortable about it. I sensed something was up, so I said that we actually started dating in high school and were together for my wife's entire time in college. All of my wife's friends got real quiet, and the rest of the dinner was awkward. On the way out, one of her other roommates took me aside and said I should have an honest conversation about what happened in college. I asked my wife on the way home, and she kind of blew me off. I told her it was important that she was honest with me, and again she said it wasn't important. When we got home, I told her I was going to stay at my brother's house until she was ready to talk about what happened in college. The next day she came over and admitted to sleeping with several men during her first two years of college. She said she didn't consider it a big deal at the time because we were long distance and she didn't think a high school romance would last. I pressed for more details, and she said it was at least 10 different men, including at least three guys she introduced to me as friends when I came to visit on weekends and one guy she was still in contact with. I told her that I wanted a divorce and would be starting the paperwork as soon as I could, which I did on January 2nd. Her family and most of my family are telling me I shouldn't throw away my marriage over a few mistakes. I've stood by my belief that cheating on me with multiple men for years is unacceptable no matter when it happened, and the fact that she continued to maintain relationships with these guys right in front of me was an unacceptable amount of disrespect. We have two children, but they are 17 and 19, and I believe they will understand why I need to end the marriage. Am I wrong for leaving? I feel like I'm going crazy with the number of people telling me to overlook years of infidelity and decades of lies. Update 1.1. Holy crap, I'm glad I did this with a throwaway because the response here is unexpected. I obviously can't answer every question or comment, but I wanted to provide some details for common questions. The reason I posted this is that my wife and a few friends have been saying it's common to sleep with other folks when you're in a long distance relationship and that I'm kind of the odd one out for not sleeping around. I felt like I was being gaslit, but I wanted an outside perspective. We live in a state with a waiting period to finalize a divorce, so I felt it was a reasonable idea to get some insight before things are finalized. After reading these comments, I see a handful of folks saying it's normal to sleep around during a long distance relationship, but it seems to be a significant minority. We saw each other a couple of weekends a month during the two-year college period. I lived about three hours away from her college, so it was long distance but not like cross-country. This was not a situation where we went months without seeing each other. The three guys I met while she was in college were meetups that happened during parties. The subject of me being her boyfriend didn't really come up, so I honestly don't know if these guys knew anything. The one guy we're still in contact with married a mutual friend from college. This is not some guy she secretly messages on the side, it's somebody we've talked to regularly for years. I've talked to him a few times since I learned about my wife. He said he didn't know we were dating at the time and has since blocked my wife on social media. Some folks have asked how the roommates didn't realize at our wedding that the timelines didn't work out. The main reason is that my wife and I had a very small ceremony with just close family in Texas, then went back to the East Coast to have a big party with friends. The typical reception and sharing details about how we met didn't really happen, so her roommates didn't realize we started dating before college. It sounds like they thought we only dated for the year we were both in the same city, then moved in together. I was open to therapy or some kind of attempt to save the marriage, but her insistence that this whole thing is common and I'm the one who's out of line is just too much for me. The only time she showed any remorse or even offered to reconcile is when I started filing paperwork. In the last week, she's gone back to saying she's right and I'm overreacting. This is also why I feel like I'm being gaslit. It seems obvious that this is a major issue, but I've got my wife and others telling me it's normal and I'm overreacting. I'm not getting a paternity test unless my kids want to get one. I don't have any doubts that they are biologically mine, and no test will make them not my kids. I love them more than anything in the world, and my wife's infidelity won't change that even if one or both of them is not biologically mine. They've been my kids for 19 years, and they will be my kids until I stop breathing. Update 1.2 Hey all, I've been reading a bunch of the responses, but things are getting crazy and increasingly unhinged, so I probably won't be checking in more. Here are a few more answers to common questions I've seen. We were definitely exclusively dating at the time. First, dating culture was a lot different 20-ish years ago, and being exclusive was kind of the default for most people. Second, we had a long and difficult discussion before she left for college about continuing the relationship long distance. She specifically wanted to stay together and even joked about her dad coming after me if I started sleeping around with girls at my school. 
Finally, at my senior prom, she was not able to attend and was very upset when I proposed going with a platonic female friend of mine. As a result, I ended up skipping my prom and hanging out with her instead. While we never said the word exclusive, I think the above reasons, combined with the general relationship before she left, are enough to assume exclusivity. Based on some comments here, I followed up with the friend that said I should have an honest conversation. She told me that 10 guys would be on the low end and that her biggest concern was that there was apparently at least one pregnancy scare that I didn't know about. I honestly don't think that really changes much. It's less about the number for me and more about the fact that she seems incapable of recognizing why this was wrong or why I feel betrayed. Thank you all for the helpful responses, even those that disagree with me. I will still be open to therapy if she's willing, but I honestly feel like it would be more about us being successful co-parents and finding closure than saving our marriage. Update 2. I wanted to provide some updates here as my original post got a lot of traction. First, let's talk about the things I learned about the situation in college. After talking to my wife in therapy sessions and texting with two of her roommates, it's clear that her roommates knew something was up in college. They said they thought the situation was weird and likely involved cheating. My wife had told them that we both had some wild times in college and worked it out before we got married, so they never really brought it up. The roommate who pulled me aside recently was uncomfortable with the fact that my wife clearly didn't talk it through with me and wanted me to know. As far as being introduced to guys she slept with, apparently that was not intended. One of the guys ended up dating and then marrying one of our mutual friends from college. This is the guy she was in contact with. In the other situations, she initially blamed me in the counseling session, but has now agreed it was bad. When I went to visit her, she planned to hang out in the room or just hang out together alone, but I wanted to go to a few parties because in high school and community college, I didn't really have parties to go to. She didn't expect me to meet the guys, but they were at the parties and she felt she didn't really have a choice. I still think this is kind of crappy, but it's not as bad as her intentionally parading me in front of the guys. Most of our discussion in therapy has been talking about why I think it's a big deal and she doesn't. She initially said that none of these guys were in relationships with her and it was mostly one night stands or friends with benefits. Since she didn't view them as romantic relationships, she didn't see the big deal, her words, not mine. My opinion is that we never said that was okay, and she actively prevented me from doing the same. After digging into this across two sessions and my wife talking to some friends, she now agrees that it was a breach of our trust and relationship. This shared understanding has helped us talk about this situation more honestly and helped us get from arguing to talking, which is why I'm optimistic about co-parenting. Now, here's why I'm 100% set on divorce. Two things came up that make me want to leave the marriage. First, about 10 years ago we went through a really rough patch and had an inactive bedroom for about two years. She had expressed that our bedroom life was becoming boring, so I tried to spice things up a bit. Apparently, she had been hung up on some bedroom experiences that happened in college, that she is not comfortable talking about, and wanted me to try them, but when I did, it made her feel awkward and guilty that it made her think of other men while she was with me. The fact that she's saying these experiences were meaningless, but they're still impacting our marriage tells me they meant more than she wants to say. Second, she admitted that she has been flirting with co-workers on business trips since the pandemic ended. She says she has never slept with anybody, but it got as far as going on a date with one of her male co-workers. That was the absolute deal-breaker for me. We have told our children that we're getting a divorce. We told them it was due to some bad decisions that we made in college that we're having trouble moving past. My 19-year-old, who is in college, asked me if I cheated on my wife while she was away at college. My wife got a little shaken up, but admitted to the kids that she's the one who cheated. We have agreed to not share any additional details with the kids. I reinforced that both of us will be there for the kids and that we are in therapy to help make sure we handle this in the best way for the family. I also told the kids that if they wanted to talk to either of us or a therapist about it, I would fully support it. We've started talking to a mediator about how to proceed with the divorce, and unless things change, we should be able to have an amicable divorce. We're both financially stable on our own, we have no major debts, and our kids are older, so custody isn't a major issue. This has been a crappy couple of months for me, but I'm doing okay now and I honestly am grateful that my last post blew up because it both validated some of my feelings and motivated me to go to counseling with my wife. Update 3. My wife and I have completed our divorce, and everything is official. We had an uncontested, amicable divorce with minimal disagreements. Our lawyers worked together to create the plan through mediation, and a judge signed off on it a few weeks ago. In the end, the actual divorce process was pretty straightforward. The only complication was that our 17-year-old was adamant about my having custody because their relationship with my ex-wife has really fallen apart as a result of this. Initially, my wife dug in her heels and was ready to give up on the uncontested divorce, but my son pretty much told her she could choose between letting him have a break for a few months to process and rebuild, or force him to live with her until he turns 18 and risk never seeing him again. I felt this was a bit harsh, but my wife backed down, and we moved forward with my having primary physical custody until my son's birthday later this year. For my part, I have encouraged my son to be open to fixing things, as the actions my ex took before he was born didn't change the 17 years she cared for and loved him. Fortunately, as the divorce moved forward, he has been spending more time with my ex, and I'm optimistic they will work through this. In the end, we pretty much split our retirement and investments 
For our house, my wife really liked the house and I didn't, so she kept the house and most of the furnishings and took out a mortgage to pay me back half of the equity and half of the estimated replacement value of the furniture. Pretty much all of our other stuff was either easy to split, my car and her car, my music gear and her hobbies, clothing, personal effects, etc., or we just agreed to sell it and split the resulting profit. Things were a bit easier for us because we had already documented most of our valuable items and electronics for an insurance rider we added to our home insurance a few years ago. Things have been going well for me personally. Both of the kids spend most of their time at my place, and we are still very close, which was my biggest fear in the divorce. I have a new house that I really love, and I gave in to the midlife crisis urge and traded in my outdated minivan for a Lexus LC 550. I even had a woman at work, not a close co-worker, invite me out on a coffee date. While I was up front with her that I'm not ready to date just yet, she said she would be happy to take a rain check and would be happy to go out with me when I'm ready. I'm honestly thrilled because she's really smart, has a great sense of humor, and our positions at work are far enough apart that we don't really work directly with each other at all. My ex and I are continuing to go through couples counseling together. We have transitioned into having closure on our marriage and making sure we maintain our relationship enough to be effective co-parents. While these sessions have been great to help me process things and keep things as healthy and positive as possible given the circumstances, it has also reinforced that divorce was the right option. It's clear from some answers in the sessions that my wife immediately started dating once the divorce process started, so whatever love was there was clearly on the way out already. I'm pretty sure the coworker she was just friends with dropped her off at our recent session. The fact that it doesn't even really make me mad is a good sign that I was also probably done with the marriage. In the end, it will take a long time for me to heal from the betrayal, but I feel like I'm making good progress and I can honestly say that the divorce was unquestionably the right decision. I've probably cried more in the last 4 months than I have in the last 20 years, but for the last month or so, I feel genuinely good about myself for the first time in a long time. I'm enjoying having my own life, been busy getting my 17-year-old ready for college in the fall, and looking forward to a coffee date with a smart, funny woman in a month or two.